Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Heather, and today we will be talking about what I plan to read for the Owl's Magical Readathon, as well as some extra books on my April TBR. <laughs> Ever since I heard about the Owls in 2019, I have been so excited for its third round because I wanted to participate so badly when hearing about it. I just did not have the time with school and all of those things. And I got even more excited when I read Harry Potter for the first time. If you haven't seen those videos, I will link them down in the description bar below. So obviously once I actually read the series and I fell in love with the series, I was even more excited for the Owls. So I I am just so incredibly excited for the Owls. If you are somehow unaware of the Magical Readathon, it is a readathon hosted by G from Book Rose and is the most detailed, beautifully done readathon that I have ever seen. She did such an amazing job making this feel so legit and really transporting us all to Hogwarts, which I think we all have wanted. I would still like my Hogwarts letter even though I already have a college degree. Thank you. I appreciate it. So for for my career, I will be doing the Hogwarts professor because that's kind of what I plan to do in real life. So I thought it was a cute little, cute little symbolism there. And I will also be taking mermaid linguistics as well. So that's kind of the game plan for the owls. For the Hogwarts professor, I have to take the course in which I plan on studying, which I would definitely teach history of magic, even though it gets quite a bad rep in the books. I would make it interesting, okay? And then I have to take Defense Against the Dark Arts and then an additional five courses of my choosing. So I will first be going over all of the planned TBR, planned courses I will be focusing my attention towards, but I also, because I'm kind of an overachiever when it comes to reading, only when it comes to reading, no other avenue of my life, I will show books for every other prompt in the readathon just because I usually read about 10 to 15 books a month and there are 12 prompts so I might as well just have a book for each of the prompts even if I don't necessarily plan on getting to all of them or they don't necessarily go towards my career. Hopefully that all makes sense. I know that was a lot. Let's just get into all of the books that I plan on reading for this readathon. So as I mentioned, I will be going for the Hogwarts professor career and the class in which I would want to teach would be History of Magic. The prompt for History of Magic is to read a book centering around witches. And so I will be reading Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. This is a new release and it is centering around Celtic mythology, witches, and I believe there's also a female female romance in here and everything about this sounds right up my alley. I really really love Celtic mythology. It's one of my favorites aside from Greek mythology and I've also heard amazing things from Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction I believe is her channel name. I'll link her down below. She has been raving about this book ever since she read it and she's got me even more excited than I was to begin with so I really want to get to this one and E. Latimer made be making a special appearance in an event that I may or may not be planning for May 30th. I don't know. This is all speculation. I'm not going to confirm nor deny anything. Bottom line, really excited to read this. Now for Defense Against the Dark Arts, which is the second course in which I am mandated to take, you have to read a book centering around water and the sea, which is truly the setting that I always and only want to read about. So I'm pretty much covered when it comes to this challenge. I do have three options for this prompt. If you are kind of new to how I do these TBRs, I like to give myself as many options as possible to encourage myself to actually follow through with some semblance of structure because if I just gave myself one option I would just not read it. As I said I only gave one option for history of magic but you know what I'm a mess I'm a liar don't believe me in anything that I say. Anyways so my first option for defense against the dark arts is crown of coral and pearl by Mara Rutherford. I believe this is about kind of neighboring islands one of them is the royalty and like the prince and the prince of of that island 
always chooses brides from the other island, and our main character's sister was kind of the one who was always led to believe that she was going to be the one to marry the prince, but then there was an accident revolving her, and so our main character has to go in her place. I'm pretty sure that's what the synopsis is. I haven't heard too many things about this book. I haven't seen too many people read it, but the people that I have seen read it really enjoyed it, so that's good to know. I, again, love an island aesthetic, love a sea aesthetic. I'm not sure if there are like mermaids involved or any like fantastical creatures, but I'm excited to find out. The other option I have is Dark Shores by Danielle L. Jensen. I don't know anything about this one except I assume that there's something to do with pirates if the cover entails anything about the story at all. Just taking a quick glance at the synopsis, it looks like it is a pirate story and they go on some sort of quest and I love to see it. Love an adventure piratey story, so I'm sure I would have a lot of fun with this. And the final option I have for Defense Against the Dark Arts is Mermaid Moon by Suzanne Kokel. This one, again, I don't know really anything about it, and I don't remember who was the one that put me on to this one, but just looking at the Goodreads description, it looks like it's following our main character who is a mermaid, and she is on a quest to look for her mother who is on land. I'm not sure if she's like half mermaid or her mother was a mermaid and she like escaped land. I really don't know. Also from the description, it looks like this is a very flowery, purpley prose book, which I would like to read a very lush, purpley prose book set in water and like land and mermaids. I think that is just a recipe for deliciousness. I am one of those people who purpley prose goes either way. Sometimes I don't like it. Sometimes I really love it. It really just depends on the author and the story. So I'm very curious to see how this goes. I would like to see this and I would like to read it. So here is the third option. So now we're going to get into the five courses I was able to choose for myself. The first one being Charms, which this one is to read a book with white on the cover. I will be reading Court of Miracles by Kester Grant, I believe is the author. That's just coming off the top of my head, so it could be completely different. The picture will be right here. You can read. I would hope so. This is a Les Mis retelling meets Jungle Book. I have no idea what that means. I can't even imagine what that means, but I have an e arc of this granted by the publishers through NetGalley, so I will be getting to this in the month of April. I am going to be doing an arc vlog, so look out for that. And so, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. I'm usually not a fan of books set in France just because I feel like there's just too many of them and I've just read too many of them, but regardless, the cover has white on the cover. I have an arc of it. I'm gonna see how I think about it. Hopefully I will be pleasantly surprised because I don't know what the hell Jungle Book has to do with Les Mis, but I am going to find out. We are going to find out together and it's gonna be a good time. The next course I will be taking is Astronomy, which is to read a book primarily during the nighttime, which I usually do anyways, and I will be reading Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. This is another arc. I won this in a good giveaways. This is a Phantom of the Opera Moulin Rouge-esque story. I think we're following kind of a showgirl and I don't know much more than that. I've also heard it compared to The Night Circus, which I did not like The Night Circus, but mainly because of the writing. I loved the setting and I loved the aesthetic of it all, but Jesus, Aaron Morgenstern, can you just say something like a regular person? My God. But anyways, I'm very, very excited for this. This cover is one of the most gorgeous covers of 2020. And Janella Angelus, again, may or may not be making an appearance in a certain event that I may or may not be hosting. Again, we are all engaging in rumors and speculation at this point. 
please do not come for me. I cannot confirm nor deny any of the rumors that are said in this channel at this time. So again, this will be making an appearance in that ARC video that I mentioned, so look out for that. Then I will be taking Arithmacy, which is to read a book that isn't your favorite genre. My favorite genre is fantasy, so I will be reading a contemporary. I will be reading Something to Talk About by Meryl Wilsner. This is a female-female romance between a Hollywood director producer, writer, and her assistant. So I love to see it. We love that. It is kind of a very slow burn romance. I am about 30% into this already at the point of me filming this. So I have quite a bit of a head start, but I'm still going to count it. Yeah, so I'm excited to include this also in the art video. I'm excited to finish it, excited to tell you guys all of my thoughts. And I really hope I love it because I love me some ladies and I love me some lady love. So truly, what could go wrong? Then I will be taking potions, which is to read a book with less than 150 pages, I think. And I will be reading Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. In the month of March, I read so many fantasy novellas and I had such a fun time with all of them. And this is a, I think, male male romance centering around like a Pan-esque forest god and some other random dude. I, I don't know too much about this, but I know it's a novella, so I probably shouldn't know too much about it before going into it, but this will be read. Very excited for it. Heard very, very good things. Very atmospheric. We love to see it, so I'm hoping I love this one. And finally, the last course that I will be taking is Herbology, and this one is also going to count for my mermaid linguistics that I want to take because who doesn't want to talk to mermaids? And Herbology is to read a book that starts with M, and I will be reading Mythic Dream. This is a mythological retelling anthology. I don't know all of the authors at all. I think Shauna McGuire writes a Hades and Persephone retelling, though, which sounds incredible because Every Heart of Doorway was immaculate and gave me all of the Hades and Persephone vibes, but it was low-key with a child, so, like, I couldn't really go all the way with that because morality, but I'm very excited for this. The cover is gorgeous. I really want to read more anthologies this year, even though I haven't read a single one thus far. Hopefully, I will get to this one because one, I really want to talk to mermaids, and two, I really want to read anthologies, and three, I love mythology, so it really should not be that hard for me to accomplish. That is all for the courses that I absolutely need to take and the ones I will dedicate my energy and time towards. But because I usually read more than seven books a month, I'm going to go over the rest of the prompts and my books that I will choose if I end up reading those books and completing those extra courses. Again, we all understand what I mean. I'm just making it overcomplicated for everybody and we truly do not need that. The next prompt is Ancient Runes, which is to read a book with a heart on the cover. This one I have two options for because again, I like options. I am bisexual. What do you expect of me? The first one I have is Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. This one is about a girl who kind of gets in trouble with a witch and the witch con steals her heart or like controls her heart. So then she has to woo a prince or steal a prince's heart. I really am not sure on the specifics, but I have heard about this book from Allie from Allie's Books. She is always great for kind of underrated YA fantasy recommendation. So if you haven't checked her out, go check her out. And she really loved this book. So this is an option. And the final option for this particular prompt, I really should have stretched before I reached that far, but The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. If you look closely, the eye of the peacock feathers <laughs> on this cover is a heart-shaped shape. I will not be taking questions or complaints during this time, so thank you. I recently got the audiobook narrated by Ben Barnes, and if you don't know, Ben Barnes is Dorian Gray. 
He literally played him in the movie. Not the greatest movie, but I still love it because I'm trash for him. So I really want to listen to the audiobook because I only want to listen to that audiobook. That is the only thing I ever want to listen to in my life. I would like him to read me the picture of Dorian Gray as I sleep. Is that weird? Perhaps, but again, no comments, complaints, or questions during this time. They will not be taken, so leave me alone. The other course I haven't discussed was Magical Creatures, which is to read a book with a bird on the cover, and I could do Witches of Ash and Ruin for this, so I could like double up and have those completed, so I don't know if I don't end up completing any of the other prompts, I can just double up on those, so that's kind of a safety net. For Muggle Studies, it is to read a contemporary, which like I said, I will be reading something to talk about, so again, I can double up on courses slash challenges, if I don't end up completing all of them. Then Transfiguration is to read a book involving shape-shifting, and for this one I will be choosing Red Hood by Elena K. Arnold. This one is described as a feminist Little Red Riding Hood retelling, and I did have this one on my anticipated reads of the first three months of the year, and I was really excited to read this because I saw a particular Goodreads review, and this girl was really, really angry about all of the man hate in this book and um although I understand that feminism is not about hating men I mean that doesn't mean that I don't you know kind of hate men sometimes and would like a cathartic experience of a girl killing bad men so really excited for this one I also saw Starla's video about this particular book and she actually really loved it and thought that it wasn't really man hating and there was a very well-rounded display of feminism so either way good feminism or bad hate man hate feminism I mean I'm good either way so this one will be fun and a, a fun time and I'm excited to check it out for myself if I ended up reading it. And then the last course is to read a book through a random number generator and I think you could have picked a series of books to pick anyway but like I'm not scared let's do my whole to be read shelf. The only problem is I have both my read and to be read books on the same shelf. I know that's kind of blasphemy for some people, but it's what I have. And so I just went and counted and from this shelf, not including any of the extra books I have flying around in my room, I have 45 unread books on my shelves that don't count like continuation of series or anything like that. So I'm gonna go through a num random number generator. I'll have it here just so you can, just so you can see I'm not cheating. Uh, one through 45, let's go. 23. Okay, well now I have to go back and count. I gotta have my glasses on because, spoiler alert, I can't see anything. Okay, so, all right, so we got An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat. Howard. This is kind of an urban fantasy, I believe, and it involves a competition surrounding magicians. I have heard pretty good things about this book, especially from Murphy from Murphy Napier, who is one of my favorite YouTubers. So I'm excited about this. It's fairly short. It's not too big. So considering the possibilities that I had on this shelf, I would say the random number generator was quite kind to me. I will possibly be reading and unkindness of magicians. So now we are done with the Owl's Readathon. We're done with her. We're canceled at least until mm, about two or three days from now. Then we're back again and we're reintroduced to her. But now I'm just gonna go over the two books that I do plan on reading that don't necessarily fit any of the prompts for the Owls. I mean, I'm sure I could fit them in somewhere, especially with astronomy, because that's kind of a course that I can read any book with. But I will be reading A Conspiracy of Truths by Alexandra Rowland. I am buddy reading this with Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book. I saw that she hauled this recently and I too have hauled this fairly recently. This is about a storyteller who gets arrested for witchcraft, but I don't believe there's any 
fantasy in this. I believe it's more of a political fantasy that doesn't really have a lot of magic in it. So neither of us really knew where this would fit in the owls. So I guess we'll try to fit it in once we've read it more and once we kind of know more of the story. But so far I'm just counting this as an extra book for me to read. The cover is so beautiful. It has this faux leather feel to it and I really really enjoy it and the back is just so stunning. I'm very very excited for this and then finally I will be reading The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. This was from my March TBR and I unfortunately did not get to it during the Backlist Readathon so I am carrying it over to April because I currently have the audiobook now. I didn't read it for the Backlist Readathon because I didn't have the audiobook. Now I have the audiobook so I will be listening to it slash reading it physically at the same time. So this will hopefully finally be read in April because I've been telling myself to read this book for ages and ages and I really just need to get it done. So here she is. She will hopefully be finally read in the month of April. Pray for me and hold me accountable, please. All right, so those are all of the books that I plan on reading in April, or those are the pool of books that I will be drawing from in my reading experience during the month of April. I will have G's video linked down below as well as the website that has all of the prompts and careers and all of the pamphlets. Let me know down below what career you plan on undertaking during this readathon. I would love to hear about your fictional aspirations and let me know down below if you plan on reading the books that I mentioned, if you have read any of the books that I mentioned. Would love to hear it. Would love to see all of the things, all of the comments. Just comment anything. Just tell me I'm pretty and that's all I could ever ask for. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!